I'm sorry. I, I know it's early. No, it's okay. Come on in. Want some coffee? No, no, I couldn't touch them a drop. I've already had six cups. I know. I've been up since five. Yeah, I noticed you're already dressed. Oh, that's not all. The closets are clean. The drawers are straightened. I clean the crumbs out of the toaster. I often ties my socks. Well, <laughs> at least we're keeping busy. Even if we're not sleeping. You know, you have to take better care of yourself. You've got that line that you get when you're tired and worried about what something. What line? Well, the line. I miss taking care of you. Jamie. <laughs> oh, I was wondering where you were. Oh, well, I was out running. I thought I'd start running again. Really? Why? Yeah, oh, I don't know. Just to kind of get myself in shape. Give me time to, you know, slow down, think. Oh, about what? Oh, is that juice? Uh, yes, grapefruit juice. Oh, Want thank some? you very much. Mm. You know, I think I like you in running clothes. In fact, you look pretty terrific. You don't look so bad in that little house smock yourself. Oh, yeah? Well, you know, uh, Mikey is out for a walk with Bridget. Does that mean we have the house to ourselves, dear? Mm -hmm. And that means we could go upstairs and we could talk about what you were thinking about while you were running. I was thinking about you. No. No, you weren't. But now that you've done all your running and you've calmed down, we can talk. About what? What are you getting at? I know you have been worried uh, about this Drew Marston thing and Max's arrest, but I just want to know why you've been so worried. Donna, I told you I didn't want to talk about this. Look, I can help. Enough, all right? Enough. Thank you for coming in so early, Mr. Gray. Well, I've never been called in for questioning before. Please, sit down. Uh, could I get you some coffee or something? Uh, thanks. Just milk. Oh, okay. Mr. Gray, uh, how long have you been on the Cory Publishing Board of Directors? Fifteen years. Fifteen? Here you go. Oh, thanks. Ah, uh, then you must know Matt Cory pretty well, then. I think I do. How do you feel about him? I think Mac Corey is one of the finest men I've ever known. This takeover thing, uh, anything like that ever happened before? Mac Corey? No. It's always been very, very stable. Uh-huh. So this must be a pretty rough time for everyone over there. Everyone under a lot of stress. You could say that. Uh -huh. how, how did this stress show on Mac Corey? Well, uh, he was, he was angry, of course. Uh, Understandably so. He built that company. How angry? Excuse me? Well, how angry was he? And at who? Well, at Drew Marston, of course. Marston was handling the takeover. Tell me about that last meeting. You know, the one where Corey was supposed to hand over the company and Marston never showed up. How did Matt Corey react to that? Well, he was furious. Understandably furious. What did he say? He said that, um, that Marston's behavior was incredibly arrogant. And, um, uh... And what? Did McCory make some kind of threat? No, no, I wouldn't call it a threat, exactly. It was the kind of thing that you say when your back is against the wall. Uh, besides, I, I don't remember the exact well, words. Well, do I... the best you can, Mr. Gray. You're going to make me say this, aren't you? He said... He said he'd like to kill Marston. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. I decided I'd come in early and go over some of these resumes. Any bright prospects? Well, they all have a sound background in finance. Well, the right person will have to have much more than that. It'll have to be someone very strong, even contentious, to help us fight off Bennett Publishing. Do you want to do the interview? No. You'll know the right person. Besides, with all that's hanging over me, I just can't concentrate on business these days. Okay. I did make some phone calls. To the photo labs? Yeah, but I didn't get anywhere. Nobody recognized the pictures of Amanda and Marston? No, but of course I had to be very careful about what I said. What are you doing? 
what I should have done a long time ago. Mac? Someone might claim that I was burning relevant evidence, but these photographs are not relevant to Marston's disappearance. Now then, no one will ever know what Marston was going to claim that our daughter did. Thank heavens for private washrooms, huh? I don't know if we did the right thing, Mac. Well, it's done now. Hi. Hi. Hello, darling. Oh, you look wonderful. Oh, thanks. Sit down. Tell us what our darling granddaughter's been up to lately. <laughs> Who's got her today? Oh, Sam's working at home, so he's watching her. And guess what? 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 This morning when I was changing her diaper, she giggled. Oh. Oh, It was honey. a new giggle, too. It was <laughs> I'm sorry, I guess maybe I shouldn't be talking so much about the baby. Why not, for heaven's sake? Well, I just know that you have more serious things on your mind, that's all. Amanda. When you come in that door smiling your beautiful smile, full of news about Alexandra, it helps me to remember that life can still be wonderfully normal in spite of all this stuff. It can be. It will be. I know. Well, here's the research that you asked me for. Already? Mm-hmm. Typed it up last night. What research is that? Oh, it's information on all the top people at Bennett. Except for the chief. Nobody would talk about him. How did you get that kind of information? Well, it was easy. I just called up and told them that I was doing an interview. You mean they gave interviews to Brava knowing it was owned by Corey Publishing? I kind of left out that part. Ah. Oh. You said you were a freelance? Wall Street Journal. <laughs> Amanda, you know I'm very proud of the work that you do, but I don't think you should have chanced that. Well, Daddy, it's the least that I can do. If it wasn't for my mistake, you wouldn't be in this mess that you're in now. Don't you worry about me. I'll be fine. And as for those pictures, no one will ever know about them. Now, these statements you say that Matt Corey made about wanting to kill Mars. Now, just a minute. He didn't exactly say... Oh, I know what he said. I have it written down right here. Were these statements typical of him? No. Wait, well, you... you've seen Matt Corey hot under the collar before, right? Yes. Say somebody dents the fender on his brand new car. Is he the type of guy who gets out of the car and says, I could kill you for that, uh, you... Definitely not. Well, then why do you think he said something like that? In front of all those witnesses, guys like yourself who had known him for years. I told you, the continuous pressure... Are you sure takeover. that he wasn't pushed beyond his limits? I don't know, I don't think so. Are you sure that he didn't go from that, uh, that boardroom to Marston's place and do what he said he wanted to do? No, absolutely Well, how can you be so sure, Mr. Gray? Because I know Mac Corey, and I don't know another person who respects a human life, any human life, the way he does. No, he would never kill anyone under any circumstances. I see. I don't know who told you what happened at that meeting, but they had reported it entirely out of context. That will be all, Mr. Gray. I think arresting a man like Matt Corey is unconscionable. Listen, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you for the coffee. Sure. He didn't say what you wanted him to say, did he? Don't start with me. I know you want to make the DA happy, but if you don't give him enough to get an indictment... I'll give him enough to get an indictment, all right? You better. It's not just business. What? Gray was right. Corey would never kill somebody because of what they did to his business. Something else had to be threatened. What are you going to do? Going over Amanda Corey's statement. Oh, come on, Rick. Not again. It must be something I missed. It's got to be her. Marston made a pass at her when she went after her husband's contract. Do you think Corey killed somebody because they came on to his kid? Maybe. But there's got to be something more. And I'll bet whatever it is made Matt Corey mad enough to commit murder. Uh, yes, Mr. Gray, please. He's not in. Oh, um, 
Look, I was supposed to make this call an hour ago, and my boss is going to be furious if I'm not able to get in touch with Mr. Gray. Uh, do you know if he has a number where he can be reached? The police station. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, no, no, my boss will just have to understand if he had to go down to the police station to make a statement. Thank you. Uh-oh. What? Phoning your lawyer, huh? What? Well, after the way I just stormed out of here, you phoning your lawyer, you're gonna walk out on me, right? Huh? No? <laughs> Are you kidding? I would never do that. I don't look, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm just really wired about this Marston thing, and Mac is a good friend of mine, and... I know. No. <sighs> it's just... It's so silly that she tried to pin this on Mac. I know Mac didn't kill Marston. I am sure he didn't either. And I know Marston had a lot of enemies. Speaking of that, I gotta go see Mac right now. You know what I just figured out? What? Well, the night that Drew Marston disappeared, we weren't together. Yeah? So, for all you know, I could have killed you. Hmm? It's not funny. Oh, all right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, uh, where were you? Where was I when? The night Marston disappeared. Donna, come on, I told Michael, you. Michael, please. Donna, please I... Just tell me where you were. I was at Mary's place, all right? I had a meeting. Oh. Oh. So now will you leave me alone? Will you stop driving me crazy? Yes, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I'm much. sorry, go on to your meeting, I and will. I, will, I will see you later. And uh, relax, would you please? Just relax. <laughs> I will. I will now. I feel like we haven't been together for years. I don't want to lose you, Lisa. Well, what are we going to do? Well, whatever it is, I want you with me. What about Vicky and the baby? That's the, that's the reason I came to see you this morning. I want to see how you feel about something. What? Well, I am the father to the baby. And I have to accept that responsibility. I know. But I know how it feels to not know your own father. And I won't have that for my child. So, you're going to be with Vicky? No, I can't. You can't? Lisa, I love you. I want to spend my life with you. Then, uh, what? Lisa, listen, I. I'm going to tell you something that's going to sound kind of strange at first, but I, w I want you to at least think about it. What is it? I, I want us to get married. I want us to live in our new house, just like we planned. Go on. I want to ask Vicky if we can adopt the baby. We? I'm asking you. If you will be the mother to my baby. serious? You don't want to do it. I don't know. So I, I know it's a lot to think about, and I don't want to push you. Have you talked to Vicky about no, this? I haven't talked well, to her. What makes you think she's going to let us raise her child? If she wants what's best for the child. And if she thinks about it, she'll realize that the most healthy thing for the baby is for him to have a mother and a father together who love him. I don't know about this. It's the best solution. If you want it, that is. I need some time. I can see that. I'll be at Mac's office for a while. I'll talk to you some more about it. You know, this whole thing keeps getting more and more complicated every day. I'm sorry to put you through. Not fair. No, it's not. It's not fair to any of us, especially your baby. Yes, Mr. McConnell, I just want to let Mrs. Corey know that you're here. Mrs. Corey, I was told I'd be meeting with Mr. Corey. Mrs. Corey will be doing the interviewing. 
because of the trouble with the takeover. If you'll have a seat over there, I'll call you when Mrs. Corey is ready. Hi. Hi. Oh, may I help you? Well, I think the deal is I can help you in this whole place. I see. Who are you? Evan Bates. I've never heard of you. Well, you get me in to see Mrs. Corey and you will. I beg your pardon? Well, this is about the job, the financial specialist. Did you send a resume, Mr. Bates? Oh, I hate messing around with things like that. I mean, I hate typing. Mr. And... Bates, I am sorry. You will not get to see Mrs. Corey. All of these applicants were screened in advance on the basis of their R-E-S. S-U-M-E, I know that. But this is who you picked, those bunch of stiffs. I'm sorry, but if you did not send a resume, then we certainly... Yes. Uh, yes, Rachel. I'm ready for the first applicant. Uh, Mr. McConnell? <laughs> Mr. McConnell, I'm Rachel Corey. Mrs. Corey, I've been looking forward to interfacing with you. <clears throat> Come in, Mr. O'Connell. Sit down. <laughs> she didn't really buy that, did she? <laughs> so that's Rachel Corey? Oh. Hi, Liz. Oh, who's this? Hi, dear. There are so many people here for that position. Well, you won't get it. Excuse me? Well, see, I've got the job. And besides, you know, you really don't look like the financial type. Aunt Liz, do Mrs. Corey a favor. Get this one out of her office. Hey, you don't stand a chance, lady, okay? Because Liz and I have a very special relationship, don't we? Are you through? Liz Matthews, that's such a pretty name. You don't mind if I call you Liz, do you? Hmm? I mean, I hate to put it to you this way, but you might as well give up. I've made up my mind. We'll see. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, you've done it all yourself. I'm so sorry. My meeting went long. Don't worry. Jake and Marley aren't back here yet anyway. Here, taste. What is it? What are you making? Mm. Mm, looks good. Mm. Right? Oh. Mm. 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 That is the best gazpacho ever in my life. All right. Mm. I just hope they get back here soon because I don't want my game hens to be overdone. Gazpacho and game hens? Wow. Well, I got the figure. You know, Marley is a pretty classy young woman. Now, you don't want to just throw down a salami sandwich on the table and say, hey, wrap your chops around that. <laughs> so, ouch. <laughs> Sorry. Delicious, huh? So, you, uh, you consider this kind of special, huh? Uh, I hope uh, this doesn't bother you, having them, you know, living with us for a while. It's going to be fine. You know, I know you have, you know, a little trouble now with... Donna and Michael. And you're not uh, all that used to living here yourself. Do you? not worry about me. Jake really wants this to work out. And do not worry about Marley. I figure the reason that she loves Jake is that he has a lot of your good qualities. Oh, you're full of malarkey. Yeah, let's be careful. I don't know. I don't want my... Uh... Game hands to burn. I'll risk it. Marlon! Hello, I didn't know you were here. Hello. Are you, uh, are you still angry with me? I am very busy, Donna. I have to get over to Vincent Mary's. Right. How are the McKinnons? Fine. How's your room? I'm with Jake, Donna. I am. I know. And you're happy. I am with the man I love. Now, wouldn't you live anywhere to be with Michael? Of course you know I would. Yes. Honey, uh, look, I, I am so sorry about everything I said. I really do have to get going, Donna. Oh, well, uh, all right. Um, listen, do you, do you think it would be all right if I uh, stopped by later? I don't think Vince and Mary would mind tonight. Oh, good. Then I'll come over today. Today? Well, yes. Um, I want to see your new home. And, and there's something that I would like to discuss with Vince. 
no, wait, no. You don't have to look at me that way. It doesn't have anything to do with me. If you think you can outweigh me, Mr. Bates, you are very much mistaken. Is that right? I have no family at home, I have a limited social life, and I happen to love my work. I like you, Liz. You got guts. Goodbye, Mr. McConnell, and good luck. Oh, and you're next lady, too. You know, Liz, hey, I'm gonna like working with you. You better get that. Miss Corey must be ready for the next wizard of Wall Street. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Rachel. I, I didn't mean to sound like that. Yes, yes, of course. I, I'll send her right in. Uh, Miss Anderson, Mrs. Corey will see you now. I'm telling you, Liz, you're wasting her time. Liz. Oh, hello, dear. Hi. Have you seen Jamie? Oh, he hasn't been here this morning. But he said he was going to stop by here. Um, you're welcome to wait if you wish. Uh, no, I'll just see him later. Thanks. Lisa. Amanda. Hi, what are you doing here? I was looking for Jamie. He said he was going to come by here, but Liz hasn't seen him. Oh. Well, how are you? I've been better. Yeah, well, I guess I know what you mean. How's your father holding up? He seems to be taking it pretty well, but I know it's getting to him. Well, give him my love when you see him. Sure. At least I'm sorry about everything that's happened. I know how you feel about Vicky. She's a friend of mine. And I do understand what she's going through. I'm sure you do. I feel sorry for you, too, though. I know that you love Sammy very much. He wants to do the right thing. The problem is, there doesn't seem to be any neat solution. Well, Jamie is one of the best guys that I know. I'd say that even if he wasn't my brother. I'm sure that he's going to make the right decision for everyone. You're telling me not to pressure him, aren't you? I know Jamie. I just know that he's going to need some time. Right. Well, don't leave because of what I said. This... Well, I just hope, young lady, that you don't think we eat like this every day. Thank goodness, or I'd need a forklift to get up from the table. <laughs> well, I hope you know I expect to do my share of cooking and cleaning here. Well, don't you worry about that. We'll uh, divvy up the chores later on. Okay. <laughs> I just hope we don't have to break out the crystal in China every time we eat. Are you kidding? We use this stuff all the time. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> mm. Well, you know, Mike Landana gave us a whole set of crystal, china, and silver for our wedding. Yeah, including a sterling silver candle snuffer. Oh, yeah? Because it still hasn't been unpacked. Yeah. <laughs> you mean that you did without your snuffer? <laughs> you know, somehow we did it. Vince, <laughs> would it be possible to have a bit more gazpacho? Would it be possible to have a bit more gazpacho? <laughs> it's strange, but I think we're going to get along just fine. <sighs> Better luck next time, honey. Yes, I'll send him in, Rachel. Yes, that's right. Uh, Mr. Griffin is your last appointment. Mr. Griffin, Miss Corey will see you now. Go get him, Griffin! Oh. Griff, Griff, Griff. <laughs> Are you always this annoying? Oh, come on. It's like down inside you. Don't you just think I'm kind of charming? So is Rumpel's stilt skin. <laughs> Liz, where is Mac? I don't know, Ada. You'll have to you excuse me. You don't know? No. He owns the place and she doesn't know? I can't see right... Oh. Hi, honey. Hi. What are you doing there? Well, I came to see Mac or Rachel or somebody, but they're very busy. They are? Yeah, they are. Oh. Well, I just, I just wanted to say, uh, hi, hi, how you doing? That's you all. sure? Will I do? Yeah. Of course. 
Step into my office. Now, young man, what's the problem? Well, um... You remember me when I was a, a kid, right? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. I mean, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I was, I was happy with, with Mom and Mac, wasn't I? Well, sure you were, weren't you? You seem to be. Why? Well, I've just... I've been thinking a lot about my dad lately. Uh, wondering what it did to me to grow up without him. I, I, I just... I, I wish I'd had more time with him. Well, you know Steve loved you. You know he wanted to be with you. Yeah, and I always had Mom. That's true. Why are you, uh, thinking about all this all of a sudden? Ricky Hudson's pregnant. I'm the father. Oh, Jason. I, I haven't said a word to Mom and, uh, uh, and Mac, because uh, they've got enough to worry about I'm right now. I'm glad you told me. I'm glad. But, listen, I... I've been thinking about asking Vicky if she would let Lisa and me adopt the baby after it's born. Are you sure you want to do that? It's the only way I, I don't have to choose between Lisa and the baby. What but I'm it? not sure if it's, if it's fair to the baby. It's one person who you're not even talking about much. Well, and one alternative I don't even want to think about. Marry Vicky and see if you can forget about Lisa. I think you can do that. I don't know. I don't know. Now, the kid sure deserves a, a shot at a, at a happy life. And with two parents that both love him. What about the parents loving each other? She's the mother. The child senses an unhappy home. Oh, Jamie, I'm so sorry. Grandma, I want to do the right thing. I know you do. But you can't go into a life with Vicky unless you go into it with your whole heart. It will work. doing here? We have to talk. Again? Why? Because we've pulled Jamie in two directions for long enough. Well, I don't suppose that, that means you're going to step aside now, does it? I will if you will. We have to stop and let Jamie make his own decision without pressure from either one of us. Wait, so you're saying that because you think Jamie's just going to run off with you into the sunset and leave me and my baby high and dry, right? Well, you want me to stand by and just uh, not fight about that? Jamie would never walk away from his responsibility to the baby. You know that. And to hell with me, right? If Jamie thought he had to be with you and the baby, then I love him enough to let him go. Could you say the same thing? Lisa, I love him more than I thought I would ever love anybody. Then think of him instead of yourself. Well, you're not going to change the fact that I'm having his baby. And you're not going to change the fact that I'm the one he loves. Neither one of us is going to get what we want. Think about what I said. Now, this is what I like to see, men barefoot and in the kitchen. Oh, I suppose you think that's funny. I thought 
find it quite amusing. Well, I want you to understand that this is a one-time happening. Tomorrow, we want to see the two of you up here rocking the cups and the pens. In. What? Cook? Oh, yes, and I have my consciousness-raising session tomorrow. I'll raise your consciousness <laughs> for you. Come in, okay. come in. It is um, a little fast here to open the door. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi. Um, actually, I just came by to uh, see that Marley got settled all right. Oh, thanks. Oh, good. And, um, Mary, to bring you a little thank you for taking Marley in. <laughs> My goodness, it absolutely was not necessary. I'm oh. delighted to have her here. It's, it's fun to have a house full of family. Oh, I know. Uh, you know how delighted we are to have Mikey with us. <gasps> a sterling silver candle snuffer. How beautiful. <sighs> Oh, Donna, that's very sweet. Yes, it is. Uh, why don't you sit down, Donna? Oh, Jake, why don't right. you uh, get uh, Donna some iced tea? Sure. No, no, really. Um, actually, I was hoping to invite you all to lunch, but I see I'm a little late for that. <laughs> yes, Vince made us all lunch. Really? Well, just like you do at the restaurant, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess. You know, Michael was telling me about this dish that he had at Mary's place. He was just raving about it. And let's see, when was he? Oh, of course, he was there the night uh, Drew Marston disappeared. No, he wasn't. Oh, yes, he was. Oh, no, no, no. Nobody was at the restaurant that night. A pipe burst in the kitchen. I had to close up. I heard the news about Drew Marston on, uh, on the radio when I was cleaning up the mess. Mm. Oh, oh, I see. Um, well, I must have gotten it confused with some other night. <laughs> I mean, what difference does it make anyway, right? Rachel. Oh, Max, she went down to personnel for a minute. Is there anything I can do to help? No, I don't think so. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> Mac, uh, can I speak to you for a moment? Please, come on in. Um, uh, uh, I'll be at my office my desk if you need me. Mr. Bates, what are you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, Michael. What can I do for you? Well, actually, uh, I was wondering if there's anything I could do for you. That's very kind of you, but Rachel's got things pretty well in hand. Are you okay? Frankly, things are not going so good. Look, when things were not going well for me in my business, when Reginald was making it so difficult, I, I kept a stiff upper lip, and I told Donna that, that everything was fine. I know Donna could handle it. It was just, well, there were some things that I just couldn't talk to her about. Now, I know Rachel is a very strong woman, but just in case there are some things you can't talk to her about, some things that are getting to you, I just wanted you to know that I'm here. Thank you, man. You know what does get to me most about all this? Probably how it affects your family. That's right. Marston's gone, but he still seems to be tearing us apart. I mean, I know how much they're worried about me, and we can't even talk about it. And except in some kind of shorthand. I didn't kill him, but there were certainly times when I could. Hi. Hi. Liz said that you uh, came looking for me. Can I come in? Sure. I've been thinking a lot about us since you left. You mean about the adoption? Yeah. So have I. I don't think it would work. You don't think that Vicky would agree to it? Even if she did. We can't cut her out of her child's life. Yeah, I know. And that would mean she would be a part of our life together. And I'm not sure I could deal with that. I understand. I just thought that... I have my own ideas about how to handle this. Rachel, there was nobody down there at all. What in heaven's name are you doing here? Desperate measures, Liz. Who? Who sent me on a wild goose? That's it. I am calling security right now. Is there a problem, Liz? Liz, please. You think I don't know when I'm being conned? Liz. Just give me one shot, please. Is there something wrong? This is Evan Bates. 
His file has been misplaced. He's here for an interview with you. Oh, Mr. Bates. Thank you, Liz. You owe me. I'll be at my desk if you need me. Thank you. That's a very nice lady. Yes, she is. She also has a soft spot for brass young men. Well, I hope you do, too. Sit down, Mr. Bates, and tell me how you propose to keep Bennett Publishing from taking over this company. Is that what this job is about? That's all it's about. Oh, I can save this company. Can you? Yes, and I intend to. Suppose you don't get this job. You're going to hire me. Why should I? And why this job? I can't think of a better challenge. Mr. Bates, if Bennett Publishing takes over this company, there's no guarantee that the Corey staff will be kept on. I'm not worried about that. I will keep the Corey name connected with this company. It's going to take more than good intentions to do that, Mr. Bates. Well, if you hire me, I'll show you. Why should I risk it? Because you and I both know that I'm the best thing to happen to this company since all that trouble with Bennett. I don't know that at all. I've just interviewed quite a few qualified candidates. Yeah, but I'm the man. You are looking at the future of Corey Publishing. All I'm seeing is a very presumptuous young man. I'll tell you what, you hire me, and you won't be disappointed. Listen, I, um, I talked my way in here, you know? I, I wasn't really prepared for this interview. But the more I'm around here, I just know that I have to have this job. Yes, and yes. I need Corey Publishing, and it needs me, too. So if you hire me, you won't be sorry. Mr. Bates. Look, I'm the most qualified candidate so far. You heard my plan? It was a good plan. It had merit. Okay, so you may not like my tactics. But I get the job done, and I do it right. And believe me, I'll be more dedicated than anybody else on your staff. Oh, that's a tall order. But you got to admit one thing. I have the European contacts. They can solidify all those weak holdings over there. Okay, so I've got desire. I've got the means. The way I see it, you just really don't have a choice. But just tell me when I start. Excuse me. There's Sergeant. Set me up here. I was uh, reading about the Marsden thing. The uh, reward? Yeah, for information. His company's putting it up. You might be interested in some pictures I had developed. Wait, you're, you work in a photo lab? What kind of pictures? Marsden and the Corey girl. Amanda Corey. And what were they doing in these pictures? <laughs> uh, not playing pinochle. I want you to wait right outside for me, all right? I'm going to get a complete statement, and then we'll see about that reward money. Whatever you say, buddy. Okay. I knew it. You never said anything about pictures. Well, why should she? It gives her father a perfect motive. Gray was right. Corey wouldn't kill to protect his company, but he would to protect his daughter. <sighs> you give me the DA. You're going away? Felicia asked me to go to Atlantic City. Why? Why now? I'm not giving up, and I'm not running away. Well, then what are you doing? Trying to be fair. Trying not to put any more pressure on you. You don't do that. Yes, I do. I try not to, but I feel like every time I'm around you, I, I'm saying, choose me. Choose me over your child. Yes, I wish it didn't have to be like this. I love you. Don't you understand that? I love you. No. Well, where are you going to be staying? It doesn't matter. I don't want you to call me. What? Use this time to make your decision. When I come back, you can tell me where we stand. Lisa. I think you should go there. make this decision. You should tell me. Oh, 
Michael? Oh, Donna, look, I'm sorry I missed lunch. I got hung up at the... Mary's office. place was closed. Well, you wanted to eat lunch at Mary's the place? The night Drew Marston disappeared, you said that you were at Mary's place, and it was closed. Donna? So please. where were you, Michael? And if you don't remember, why don't you check your book or ask your secretary or... Donna, stay no! out of it! where were you? I was at Drew Marston's hotel. Michael, why would you lie to me about that? Because, Donna, the less you know, the less trouble you can get into. What kind of trouble? Donna! I did something illegal. TV, John Stoneman and his crew travel through dangerous waters to search for a shipwrecked naval vessel on the last frontier. Then Sunday, cheer on the Toronto Blue Jays as they challenge the Texas Rangers. And Sunday night, a passion for medicine brings Dr. Ben Casey back to the county medical hospital after 25 years in the return of Ben Casey, CTV Sunday movie.